Greetings everyone, this is not an expert here back again with another video. Today we'll be solving problem number 17 and the difficulty it's been rated at is hard. Uh, this problem was asked by Google. Again, you don't really need to get intimidated by that. All right, let's just get down to the problem description. So suppose we represent our file system by a string in the following manner. The string is represented as a dir. Okay, so just for some clarification, we'll be calling this as new line and this as tab. And the reason why that is, is basically that's what it's denoting. So if you see over here, dir is the root. So it's been represented like this. And if you look at backward slash n and backward slash t, it's basically denoting that it's the next line and you want to tab it out once. Same thing with sub dir too. You are doing one more backward slash n and backward slash t. Therefore, it has one tab and it's on the next level. Uh, then you have tfile.ext, which has backward slash n, backward slash t, and backward slash t again. So, uh, okay, so if, you, if you're understanding what it's doing, it's basically representing a sort of a nested structure where every single time you see a tab, that's the level it's at. So if this is the root level, this is the first level, and this is at the second level. All right, cool. So we've got an understanding of what the string represents. So it's saying that the directory dir contains an empty subdirectory subdir1 and a subdirectory subdir2 containing file.txt, which is denoted over here, which is pretty simplistic. All right, and they've given one more example here. I'm not gonna go through that example, but basically creates the structure. You can pause the video and go through it. It's pretty simple. All right, so it's explained what it's doing over here. And now coming to the more important problem. So we are interested in finding the longest number of characters or path to a file within our file system. For example, in the second example above, the longest absolute path is this guy. All right, and its length is 32. So basically, we want to understand what's the longest part. But while we're creating the longest part to a particular file, we also want to understand that when we're doing that, when we're doing that entire traversal, the maximum path might not be just the number of levels that a particular file has. For example, um, let's just say that uh, we had sub dir1, sub dir2. But we might have had one more file structure like um, just one, which would have another nesting inside of it, say two, another nesting, let's say three, and then there would have been a file over there. It's not dependent on the number of nestings that we have, but the absolute path when converted into a string, that's the longest absolute path. All right, cool. So the name of file contains at least a period and an extension. Okay, and we'll be using that. And the name of a directory or subdirectory will not contain a period. Okay, cool. So fortunately, we were able to find this problem on lead code, and the name of this problem is called as longest absolute file path. I have not solved this ever before, but it seems like a pretty simple problem. So let's just get down to it. Okay, so before we start, we need to understand a few things, right? So one of the things which we need to understand is, is what is a particular level at? Or rather, we need to maintain a level dictionary. The reason why I'm thinking of a level dictionary is basically because I want to understand that at, let's say, level 1, or let's just say the depth, right? At depth 1, what was the file name, right? And when I do that, it will just help me understand a lot more things. All right, cool. <clears throat> so let's get down to it. Um, so first thing we're going to make is something of a level dictionary. Um, I'm just going to give minus 1 and 0 over here just as a base condition. Um, the reason why I'm putting this base condition is just because um, I'll explain it a little later, but basically if you have minus 1, uh, the total length that you have encountered till now would obviously be 0. Uh, and before we start, let's just put in a few base conditions as well, like if input is not there, just return. All right, cool. We also want to maintain what's the maximum value that we've encountered so far. So let's just create a value and call it as max length and just give it a value of zero. All right, cool. So we've 
come down here now how would we iterate this entire solution so one of the ways that we can do this is by actually splitting the string so we know that we can actually go line by line right because that's how it's represented and that's what we're going to do as well so we're just going to say for line and input dot split and we're basically splitting through the line notation so now what we'll have is we'll have each line as we go forward right and while we're doing that we also want to understand a few other things for example what's the number of count or what's the depth at which we are at and that can be actually denoted by a backslash t right so all we want to do is we just want to understand what the depth is and the way we can compute that is doing a simple count and doing backward slash t. So what this would do is this will give me the number of backslash t's that are there inside my substring. Cool. Um, if you don't understand what's happening here, I'll do a quick print so that you get an idea of what's happening. Just taking a little bit of time to load up. Apologies. Cool, and we finally have our result. Basically, a DIR has no depth, T sub DIR has one, and so does this guy. All right, cool, so we have something to go with. And again, now what we'll be doing is we'll be using our level dictionary, right? And the key is going to be the depth, whereas the value is going to be the actual length of the, of the substring that we have, right? So let's just do that, let's just do LVL of depth oops and uh, just to length of the line which we have uh, we would also have to subtract this particular variable which we've got in because we want to reduce the um <clears throat> the length of that particular line right um and that's that's the way to go about it uh one thing which we're sort of missing over here is that <clears throat> all this would do is it, it would just you know append everything all all the lengths of our particular sub dir and move on from there that's not something that we want right what we want is is the maximum range that we've encountered so far and the way we can do that is basically through this uh, lvl dictionary so the lvl dictionary as you know is going to maintain the key of the depth and the value which is going to be the length of that particular line. And in our case, we want to understand what's the length of the line before this, what's the maximum length of the uh, you know, nested structure that we've got so far. So all we have to do is we just need to add this computation which we have with depth minus one, and we're good to go. Uh, and you know, just for the base condition, so we have dir, uh, which is basically zero and depth is zero. So when you do zero minus one, you come over here and this is not going to add anything. And all it's going to add is just the DIR length and that's it. Uh, one other thing which we have to do is we now need to compute if we've sort of encountered a particular file. And if you note before the way it was sort of given to us was basically uh, that if you have a line which has um, a dot inside of it at that particular moment of time we we know for a fact that it's a particular file right so let's just do that let's just say if dot in line if that's the case by computing the max length let me just let's just compute the max length which is either the max length itself or or the level depth that we presently add and the length of the line at which we've sort of computed it. So basically level of depth, right? And I think this should be it. And basically what we can do is we can return our max length. Um, and yeah, let's just cut this out. And are we missing something? Don't think so. Let's try running it once. Hopefully it should run. Okay, so we're missing out something. Let's just have a look at what we're missing out. Our output is... Ah, so one thing which is a bigger problem for us is that we sort of, you know, 
neglected neglected out the depth for for our understanding right um, but that's something which we don't want to do in our case when we are computing the max length and only when we're not computing the max length right so let's just try running this now and there it is so let's just try submitting the solution and cool so this is working perfectly the problem statement was the exact same problem statement as the daily coding problem one and all you've done is you've just maintained a level dictionary which is going to use the key uh, the key value is basically going to be the depth and the value inside of it is just going to be the length of the length which you sort of encountered till now and that's it right uh, and while you're sort of updating everything else if you might be asking this particular question on how does uh, you know this particular case run so as you can see over here you know sub dir1 right and after you get sub dir1 what's the next thing that we're getting we're getting file1.ext so basically you can make this assumption that after we've done traversal of one of the structures we're only going to go through that structure and that's how the substring is sort of built out so we don't really need sub dir1 after we have you know computed this guy over here so we basically discard it by sub dir2 and then you know do computations on sub 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 dir2 and so on and so forth so all you've done again is just you know maintain a simple dictionary and that's it and the value is just basically the depth at which you've computed it at and that is it that's it so far again so thank you so much for uh watching this video it's been a pleasure explaining this problem to you um if you did like this video do leave a like and do subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed um we are a discussion over here and we're trying to solve problems in the most easiest way possible and if you have any comments which is a more optimal approach and if you have any doubts just leave them in the comments below as usual i'll be leaving the lead code link in the description below so you can go ahead and visit it over there again thank you so much for watching this video you're awesome we all know it and have a great day